The assassination of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on April 4, 1968, set off a wave of unrest and uncertainty across the country and on college campuses. Black students nationwide were seeking ways to engage their campuses in progressive change. The Black Action Society was soon formed at the University of Pittsburgh and quickly lived up to its name. On January 15, 1969, history was made at the university. A group of African-American students, supported by community members, locked themselves in the computer center in the Cathedral of Learning, launching a peaceful protest. Their demands? The recruitment of more black students, faculty, and staff, more black-centered campus programming, and the establishment of a black studies department. What seemed like simple and reasonable requests by today's standards, these demands came during an era of disruptive social change on campus and across the nation, aimed at spurring progress in society at large. Fifty years later, members of the university community, alumni and special guests, came together to commemorate that transformative sit-in and its trailblazers. The room, filled to capacity, reflected some of the fruits of their courageous action, advances in the recruitment of black students, faculty, and staff, attention to the black experience at Pitt, and significantly, a recognition of the value of diversity and inclusion as assets in any setting on the march toward progress for all. That seed that was planted 50 years ago today has begun to grow, and it's creating real change. The students who band together in the computer room that night in 1969 relived their memories and read first-person accounts from a collection of essays compiled to mark the event's 50th anniversary. Many recalled how university leadership stepped up to hear those who raised their voices. It was an era of protest. What was beautiful about what happened at the University of Pittsburgh was that there were no injuries, there was no damage to property. There was no um, police that were brought in on the campus. What that all said to us when we look back on this is that at the helm of the university, Chancellor Wesley Poswa went in and negotiated with these students and it came out to be a very peaceful negotiation. That did not happen on all the campuses across the country. We went into the computer center at approximately 8.30. We left at 3 a.m. with Chancellor Palsvar and his team agreeing with our demands. For us, it was a moment when the human spirit rose above circumstance. For the members of the Black Action Society, they knew their success would have major repercussions, even beyond the boundaries of the Pitt campus. As we left the computer center and descended to the ground level, I noticed the media gathered outside. I'll never forget Joe McCormick, chairman of the Black Action Society, being asked how many students were involved in the takeover. He replied, 22 million. <laughs> Immediately, Chancellor Pazvar began to implement changes. The negotiations between the students and administration were cordial and created a campus that became, and continues to become, a more welcoming space for all. There was no contention. That's what I remember. There was no contention. Everything was handled with such uh, deliberation. There was respect extended on both sides. And so, and I think that you can get a lot accomplished. Everything doesn't have to involve screaming and hollering. Because we went in knowing who we were, and we went in knowing what we were owed. And it was reasonable. The commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the sit-in concluded with a processional walk to the cathedral, accompanied by drum beats and lanterns, a symbolism of how the Black Action Society lit a flame that still burns today. Current students were encouraged to keep the dialogue of diversity and inclusiveness going, and like the brave students who paved the way, to say it loud, I stand here knowing that I stand on giant shoulders, knowing that I could not have been here had it not been for some of the folks in this room taking a stand. So for that, I say thank you. 
This event has kept us forever in the past. And while we have made great progress as an institution, we continue, we continue to need to make additional progress. It's worth reflecting that it began in the context of the time, and it was the vision and the leadership of those students who came together, who stuck together, and raised their voice for change. And I think in that is a lesson for all of us, that in the time we find ourselves today, and whatever challenges we face today, the power we have is one of coming together in unity, with clear and common purpose, and raising our voice. Upstairs in room 613 of this union lies the BAS office, and in there hangs a newspaper clipping from the Pitt News detailing the events and reactions that took place on January 16, 1969. My favorite quote from the whole piece came from a white male who was a junior at the time, and this man was clearly very angry about black students wanting their opinions and voices to be heard. He goes on to say, you watch, nothing will come of this. <laughs> I would love to see this man's reaction to see that 50 years later, not only is the Black Action Society still around, but it has been an organization that has been able to serve the students of this campus and been a driving force in the Pittsburgh community. Today, Pitt's freshman class is the most diverse and academically accomplished in Pitt's history. The university's African-American alumni network of more than 20,000 graduates is an accomplished and vital contributor to Pitt's ongoing story and to its achievements locally, nationally, and globally.